So 1.2 is rounding. And yeah, rounding is a form of estimation. I know last time I said uh, mathematics, generally speaking, mathematics, we're not, we don't like to estimate because it's not exact, right? Whereas mathematics itself is very exact. So um, you, you may be wondering why we're doing it. It's because rounding does have, uh, it does have its usefulness from time to time. In fact, sometimes it makes things uh, a little bit more convenient, I would say. So, for example, in, in one of my classes, uh, one of my other classes recently, we looked at this number right here. Let me make sure I did that right. Millions, billions, trillions. This is 27 trillion. And uh, if we wanted to give it some applicability, we'd give it a label like this. That's 27 trillion dollars. Uh, if I remember right, that's, a, that's what the national debt was of the United States last time I checked. Around that, something like that, okay? Now, you may be wondering, well, what does that have to do with rounding? Well, just think about this, okay? I mean, if, if you were to look at this place value right there, that's the thousands. They're in purple. Uh, and you may be like, yeah, you know, if I could just get a thousand bucks, man, that's a lot of money. And it, to me, it's, yeah, it's a lot of money. So, yeah, right here we got this, you know, this, that's what I was talking about here, this in the thousands place value. Like, yeah, a thousand bucks to me is a ton of money. That's true for most of us, I suppose. Uh, but when you consider it with $27 trillion, it's like, oh, yeah, your thousand dollars really is minuscule and maybe insignificant, relatively speaking, okay? So scientifically as well, right, when you start looking at, um, like, distances, like if you're looking at, the distance from the earth to the moon and no i'm not completely sure why you would do that but let's say you were and you were thinking about uh, how off you were if you were three inches off right so well three inches compared to that many miles is kind of jack squat you see what i'm saying so that's where rounding is important it may be important uh, to you in the future okay so rounding uh it's just it's it's really just kind of a three-step process Four, depending on the size of the number and where you're rounding to, okay? So the first thing you got to do is identify the digit in the place value that you're rounding to. That's what this first one is kind of saying right here. So identify the digit that is to be rounded, okay? So that's kind of our target place value, at number one. We just need to identify where that is in the number. Next, and you see there's kind of two parts to number two. We just look to the right of that digit and... The place value to the right of that digit will tell us if we need to add one to that place we're rounding to or if we just need to keep it the same. So if the place value to the right of the digit is five or more, you add one to that target place value. If it's less than five, then you're just going to round it down. Now, just so everyone understands, if you're, if you're into, um, I wouldn't necessarily call it a gimmick, but like catchy stuff. You can, you can Google, not Google, but YouTube, um, like, rounding songs. And as far as I know, there's, there's one for, um, uh, like, hip-hop type music. I think there was one for country. Um, there's some that are maybe more corny than others. Maybe they're all corny. But uh, you can watch those, and then uh, it may help you, again, just kind of as a as a way to memorize this stuff, okay? Now, the other thing we need to remember is after we round it by either adding one to that target place value or keeping it the same, anything to the right of that target place value becomes zeros, okay? So all of the place values to the right become zeros. So rounding, if we think about what rounding is, we're, we're really saying um, if we look at a specific place value, what value in that place value is closest to the number that we have, right? So if I looked at something like a five, that's a five, 5,692 like this, okay? And let's say that we were gonna round this to the nearest hundred, right? So I'd say, okay, I got my six in the hundreds place value, right? You got a two in the ones place value, nine in the tens, six in the hundreds place value. So really what this is saying is, uh, if I'm rounding to the nearest hundreds, I'd say, is this full number, is it closer to 600 or is it close to 700? 
Um, and, you know, just based on what we see here with the nine and the two, you could say pretty quick. I mean, if, if you got this down, you'd say, well, I know that's, that's closer to 700 than it is to 600, uh, which would be true. Now, if we went by the rules, though, which you can do, whether you know that this is closer to the 700 uh, or the 600, uh, you know, that's relative, but let's use the rules, okay? So I say, I got, I've identified the six. I look immediately to the right of that nine right there. Nine falls into this category right here, right? It's five or more. Five or more includes five, so five, six, seven, eight, or nine. If it's any of those four numbers, then we're gonna add one to that place value. So in this case, it is nine. We're gonna add one to the target place value, which is the hundreds. And so I'd say, okay, six plus one, boom. I know that's seven. Now, right here, the third part there says, any place values to the right of that target place value become zeros. And there's only two place values to the right. So those are going to become zeros like this. Now, what about the values to the left? They are going to stay the same unless they've been changed by the addition of one. So I, I drop that five right there. And I'd say 5,692 is closer to 5,700 than it is to 5,600, okay? Because that was the only two options that we had in terms of closeness. But applying the rules, we get the same answer either way. So we're going to round 762 to the nearest tenth, and then we'll deal with those other four numbers as well, okay? So we'll start with something small, then we'll look at some bigger numbers as we go. It's just the size of the number shouldn't make a difference, by the way. So it doesn't matter how many digits the number has because we're not always rounding all the digits, right? So like this one, round 762 to the nearest 10. Okay, so again, we need to identify where that tens place value is. What digit is in that tens place value? So I see the two in the ones place value and the six in the tens place value there. So since I'm rounding to the nearest 10, the six is in the tens place value. I look immediately to its right. Now, of course, to the right of the tens place value is the ones place value. That's where the two is. The two is less than five. So what's going to happen to that six? It's just going to stay the same. It's going to drop as a six. And anything to the right of the six, the tens place value is going to become a zero. And anything to the right stays as is. Seven is just going to be seven. Of course, that was in the hundreds place value. So uh, 762 rounded to the nearest 10 is 760. Now that's round 13,612 to the nearest hundred. Okay, well, we need to identify where the hundreds place value is. So the two is in the ones place value, the one in the tens, and the six in the hundreds place value. So I look immediately to its right in the tens place value, which is where the one is there. And since it's a one, it means that the six in the hundreds place value is going to stay the same. It's going to stay as six. Now we have these other two place values to the right of the six. So I need two place values to the right of six filled in with zeros right here. And also anything to the right of the six stays the same. So the three in the thousands place value stays a three. The one in the ten thousands place value stays a one. And that would be our final answer there. 13,600 is 13,612 rounded to the nearest hundred. So this next example, we're going to round 54,128 to the nearest thousand. And I got a four in the thousands place value. Okay, let's just identify those again. Eight is the ones place value, two in the tens place value. And um, actually, I, I hope you guys don't mind if I change this to a seven right there. Um, we haven't seen any other rounding up needed on this, and I don't see that's going to happen either. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make this a 7, okay? So just scratch that in as a 7 over the 1 right there, okay? So it's actually 54,712 that we're rounding. So now there's a 7 in the hundreds place value. Uh, now the 7 is important, right? Because that is the place value immediately to the right of the 4, which means 7 is 5 or more, which means the 4, we're going to have to add 1 to the 4, okay? 
So that's four plus one, which is five. That's the, our target place value in the nearest thousand. All the place values to the right of that thousands place value become zero. So you can see we got three place values to the right of that. So there should be three zeros to the right of the five in the thousands place value. But the five in the ten thousands place value is going to stay. And we end with 55,000. And uh, yeah, I, I apologize for changing this problem in the middle of the lesson, but I, I hope that makes sense right there. So let's do this next one, 509,045. We'll round this to the nearest 100,000. It is important to be able to uh, identify the digit that is in our target place value, which, yeah, we're looking at the 100,000s, right? So ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. We're looking at that five right there in the hundred thousands position. So... Since it's a five in the hundred thousands position, I, move, I look immediately to its right in the ten thousands position, and I got that zero right there. Since it is a zero, the five in the hundred thousands position will stay a five. But then everything to the right of that hundred thousands place value will become zeros. So what do we got? One, two, three, four, five place values there. So I need five zeros to fill in those place values. And yeah, this is 500,000. You can put the comma in it if you like, uh, but that's our answer for this one. All right, so here's what we're gonna do next. Uh, we did those four problems right there. Uh, what I'd like you to do is try that last one right there. It says uh, round, that's 8,191,832 to the nearest million, okay? Try this one out, and then we're gonna go over it together, and then you can check your answer with what you get. But we'll, we'll take 30 seconds, try this one out, then we'll do it. So rounding this to the nearest million. So yeah, we need to identify the number in the millions place. So we got the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. And yeah, we got this eight here in the millions place value. And we are rounding to the nearest million. So I'm gonna look immediately to its right. The place value to its right is the hundred thousands. We got a one right there. Since it is a one, that's less than five, which means the eight will stay an eight then all the other place values will become zero. So you know, we got one, two, three, four, five, six place values there. So one, two, three, four, five, six zeros is what we should have. And I'll just fill those in. Now, whether you use the commas or not is up to you. I believe the homework will accept the commas. It will accept the, this type of answer without the commas as well. But yeah, we get 8,191,832. Rounded to the nearest million is 8 million. All right, now, now again, if, if you want to search up those songs, it's good. It would help you out. I guess maybe I should apologize. I, you know, There's no way I'm going to sing for you guys, by the way. So if you're disappointed, sorry about that. All right, there's also what we call front-end rounding. So front-end rounding is where we round to the front-end. Now, what is the front-end? It's the, it's the digit that's uh, furthest to the left right here, okay? So we look to the place value furthest to the left. Now, it should never be a zero, by the way, the digit furthest to the left, because a zero holding place value like that is, uh, it, it doesn't mean anything, okay? So just get rid of those if you see it. Not that we should on the homework. But we're, we're only going to look furthest to the left in those place values. And that tells us the place value that we're rounding to. So front-end rounding, it's, it's, um, it changes from number to number. Uh, you know, sometimes your, your place value farthest to the left is the hundreds place value. Sometimes it's the millions. We just never know until they give us the number and then tell us the front-end round, okay? Now, front-end rounding is nice. Uh, but sometimes when we get into the operations, particularly with addition and subtraction, uh, it can cause a little bit of confusion because uh, when you're looking at front-end rounding two different numbers, it means that you may not be rounding to the same place value. Now, everything else works the same way. It's just front-end rounding identifies the place value for us. Uh, and again, it's not like we're looking at a specific place value. Uh, we're just looking at the digit 
or place value furthest to the left in the, in the number. After that, it's just, yeah, you look to the right of that place value, whatever that place value is. If, it's, if that digit is five or more, you need to add one to the front end. If it's, if it's less than five, then you just keep that digit the way that it is. Change all other values to the right of uh, our front end to zeros after that. That's it. Gonna make up an example, um, and we'll front end round this thing, okay? So we'll say 995,871. And yeah, I just pulled that out of thin air. Doesn't matter what it is, okay? So this would say, hey, we're gonna front end round this, okay? So uh, again, it's not saying we're looking at any specific place value other than the one that's farthest left, which for this problem is the hundred thousands. And I got a nine right there, okay? Now what happens in this case, and this is kind of a special case for us because we haven't seen it yet, but I, I would look immediately to the, to the right of that place value. And I, I see I got a nine right there. That's in the 10,000s place value. Well, that's five or more. Nine is five or more. So I need to add one to the 100,000s place value, right? So I'd say, okay, I got nine plus one and uh, nine plus one is 10 right there, right? Okay, so I do have 10, but what happens to all those other place value? It's the same thing that we've seen. All these other place values to the right of the 100,000s is going to become a zero. Now, you may notice, though, that the 100,000s themselves, that place value became a zero. Uh, but that came from the 10, right? Because we had to do 9 plus 1. So these zeros that I've written in black here, they came from the place values to the right of our front end or our target rounding place value. The zero from the red, that was from nine plus one. It's very different how we got those zeros uh, and it's important to know the difference. So 995,871, if I front end rounded it, it would be one million. Because it's closer to one million, even as a hundred thousand, uh, as a hundred thousands type number, than it is to 900,000. All right, so let's uh, front end round these suckers as well, okay? So we got uh, 68,241, 203, 12, and 4,117. So yeah, we'll stick with front end rounding here just because it told us to, of course. But uh, once again, in order to identify the front end rounding, we just identify the digit farthest to the left. And it almost doesn't even matter what its place value is um, because we'll be looking to the right of that place value one way or the other. And so I got a six, that is the 10,000s place value, if you were cu curious though. And I look to the right and I got an eight, boom. So that eight in the thousands place value, it's five or more, which means the six in the 10,000s place value, I'm gonna have to add one there. Okay, so I get six plus one, which is seven. And then once again, anything, any place value to the right of our front end becomes a zero. So that's one, two, three, four zeros which is 70,000. So uh, 68,241, front end rounded becomes 70,000. So we're gonna do the same thing with 203. Uh, but again, it's, it's a different place value now because it's a different number. So it's front end may be in a different place value. So I look to the left, and I see the two is the number farthest to the left here. I got 203. So I look to its right in the tens place value, the zero there. Now the zero means that it's five or less, or less than five, I should say. And so the two is just gonna drop as a two. And then all the other place values to the right are going to become zeros, which makes this then 200. So 203, front end rounded, is 200. All right, so we got 12 now, and this is front end rounding. So my front end is the tens place value, and immediately to the right is the ones place value. It's just a two. Two is less than five, which means the one in the tens place value will stay a one. Anything to the right of that place value becomes a zero. It's only the ones place value, which means... 12, front end rounded is 10. 
Now, since there's no questions, what I'd like to do, is same thing we did on those that last set, is we're going to take 4,117. Just take 30 seconds and see if you can front end round 4,117, okay? And then we'll come back, do it, and you can check your answers with what we get, okay? 30 seconds, go. So 4,117, I'm going to look at its front end, which is the four. All right, that's in the thousands place value. To the right, I got a one. And since it's less than five, that four in the thousands place value, the, the front end is just going to stay a four. And then all the other place values become uh, zeros. So 4,117, front end rounded is 4,000.